Lymphomas are a cancer from uh, a cell we call lymphocytes, a blood-derived uh, cell, and lymphocytes normally uh, are responsible for the immune system. So it's a cancer of the immune system. We recognize uh, two major categories, uh, so-called Hodgkin's disease and non-Hodgkin's lymphomas. Uh, Non-Hodgkin's lymphomas and are certainly the more common variety and collectively represent about two dozen or more different entities that have different uh, presentations, natural histories, treatments, and outcomes. Um, we treat uh, the lymphomas differently uh, based on uh, the type of lymphoma. Uh, very generally speaking, uh, aggressive lymphomas or the lymphomas that are can progress very rapidly and uh, kill a patient in a matter of months, uh, but by virtue of the fact that the cells are dividing rapidly, it makes them more sensitive to chemotherapy and therefore possible to eradicate and cure with, uh, with aggressive chemotherapy. In the indolent lymphomas, on the other hand, the strategy is more uh, to treat only if patients develop symptoms or threaten to develop symptoms or complications from the lymphoma. Uh, the reason is that uh, a certain number of patients, uh, even over decades, sometimes never need treatment in their lifetime. Uh, the second reason is that um, even if a patient needs treatment, he, he, may, he or she may not require treatments for years before symptoms arise uh, and uh, becomes necessary to, to treat. And lastly is the idea that if you treat lymphomas, uh, especially one that's incurable, one may have to go through several treatments over one's lifetime. And whenever you treat a lymphoma, whatever survives and comes back later has a potential of being more resistant to the same treatment or even other treatments. So the idea is not to waste unnecessarily therapies uh, for purely cosmetic reasons uh, uh, and then later regret uh, that we don't have uh, you know, that agent or chemotherapy available when we really need it. Uh, Bendamustine is a very old drug that uh, really was developed um, uh, in the Second World War in East Germany and uh, was uh, quickly recognized as potential for treatment of uh, cancers, in particular lymphoma, in that, in that country. Uh, and they had decades of experience uh, with that drug as a standard of care for lymphomas uh, before the reunification of uh, Germany. Following the, uh, the reunification of Germany, West Germany had access to the drug and really were leaders in uh, further developing the drugs in clinical trial and appreciating its spectrum of activity uh, and developing indications for the drug. Uh, from uh, West Germany, uh, then uh, the experience spread throughout Europe uh, and uh, later, um, once certain commercial agreements were put in place uh, to North America, and particularly the United States. Um, and in fact, uh, both Europe and the United States uh, had uh, several more, uh, had much more experience in advance of us here in Canada. Health Canada in August approved uh, two major indications for the use of bread and mustine, which has uh, been commercialized under the trade name of Trianda. Uh, the first one is the treatment uh, in first line of um, symptomatic uh, chronic uh, lymphocytic leukemia, uh, which is the commonest leukemia in the Western world. Uh, and the second major indication is the second line therapy of indolent non Hodgkin's lymphomas uh, that have either progressed or failed standard treatments uh, that included an agent we call rituxan. It's possible to combine uh, bendamustine and other agents. Uh, perhaps the most important combination is with uh, an antibody, a type of protein, uh, which is not a chemotherapy as such, but a type of protein which has been developed to target specifically B cells uh, in non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, there's also a number of ongoing trials that can bend a muscle in combination with other agents, um, and uh, depending on the results of these uh, trials, it uh, is highly likely that Bendamustine will be used in combination with some of these other agents in the uh, not too distant future. Uh, if we first uh, look at uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia or CLL, uh, there's been a number of trials, but perhaps the one that is uh, most often cited is the randomized trial comparing uh, bendamustine uh, with uh, chlorambucil, 
uh, the latter being probably the drug that's most commonly prescribed in older patients. Um, all this to say is that uh, response rates and a particular time uh, to progression uh, are superior uh, in, uh, by factor two or three in favor of bendamustine uh, relative to chlorambucil. Uh, if we uh, look at the results of, and the efficacy of bendamustine in indolent lymphomas, uh, again, a number of trials have been performed, but perhaps the one that has had the greatest impact is that uh, by Rommel and colleagues uh, in Germany uh, who uh, gave an update of the results of both the American Society of Clinical Oncology and the European Society of Hematology meetings uh, held just this past June. Uh, in that study, patients with indolent lymphoma, including mantle cell lymphoma, were randomized to receive either bendamustine plus rituxan um, uh, versus uh, the standard care and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma generally, a combination we call R-CHOP. Um, what was uh, really quite striking is that bendamustine with, uh, with toxan, uh, despite uh, demonstrating superior efficacy to R-CHOP uh, with uh, uh, essentially a doubling of what we call the progression-free survival, uh, did so with uh, reduced toxicity. Um, this reduced toxicity included less hematological toxicity and the, their, and the infections that may result from uh, hematological toxicity, as well as other things that patients appreciate quite well, uh, such as uh, essentially the absence of a hair loss, uh, which is really quite common in the standard care uh, with our child. The approval of bendamustine by uh, Health Canada in August is very likely to change the standard care in Canada for patients who have uh, CLL or indolent lymphomas. Um, the demonstration of uh, lower toxicities and oftentimes superior efficacy for bendamustine uh, I think will lead to uh, many physicians who specialize in the treatment of these disease uh, to incorporate bendamustine in their treatment uh, algorithms or um, for uh, different types of patients. Bendamustine has potential uh, to be used in the future in pathologies other than uh, chronic uh, lymphocytic leukemia uh, or in the non-Hodgkin's lymphomas. Um, for example, recent trials have demonstrated its efficacy in multiple myeloma. Uh, there's been interest in using high-dose bendamustine for conditioning in the uh, stem cell transplant setting, and there's also been exploration of bendamustine in non-hematological solid tumors. It's interesting to note that bendamustine increasingly is part of the backbone um, to be used in combination of different drugs and different pathologies uh, in uh, uh, existing and uh, new trials and cancer in general. So I think the prospect for us to see bendamustine in, uh, in, a, in a broader uh, spectrum of pathologies um, is likely in the future. If we look in the chemotherapy front, uh, things have been relatively static uh, for the treatment of uh, lymphomas for really a couple of decades now. And I would say that the arrival of bendamustine is, uh, is really uh, a major change and uh, really um, offers a prospect of um, a less toxic and more potent combinations in the future. The experience uh, with uh, benamustine uh, by clinicians in Canada have been relatively limited. Uh, fortunately for me, I had the opportunity to uh, work with benamustine um, either uh, on patients that were on clinical trial before it was approved by Health Canada or in individual cases uh, where we were able to obtain uh, permission to use bendamustine on compassionate grounds uh, from Health Canada and the manufacturer uh, Lundbeck. Um, and I can say that in most cases, uh, I was uh, extremely pleased as a clinician uh, with the result. And if I can cite uh, one patient uh, who had mantle cell lymphoma um, that was referred to me and had been with referred after he had proven uh, refractory to uh, two lines of uh, therapy, and in fact was at a stage where he was being offered uh, palliative radiotherapy and probably uh, had a life expectancy that was less than one year. And um, it was actually uh, very uh, gratifying to see that after two cycles 
of Ben de Mastin. He was already in complete remission uh, with uh, virtually uh, no significant toxicity. And uh, now, in fact, his outlook is completely different. Uh, he's now a candidate for a potentially curative uh, stem cell transplant. And so it's really quite gratifying to, to see a patient who uh, faced almost certain death and uh, really no viable prospects uh, to also now have a chance uh, at getting his life back. And I have other patients who had similarly uh, dramatic um, benefits uh, from the arrival of new drugs. And so, yeah, as a clinician, it's always great uh, to have uh, access uh, to uh, new drugs uh, that enable us to offer better treatments uh, to our patients.